Aboard President Eisenhower's personal plane, Indonesia's President Sukarno arrives in Washington for a two weeks visit. Vice President Nixon and Secretary of State Dulles are at the field to greet the Indonesian leader who was accompanied by his 12-year-old son, Gunter. The 55-year-old chief executive of the Muslim nation is given a warm welcome in the nation's capital. Escorted by the vice president after a parade through Washington, he arrives at the White House, where President Eisenhower is waiting to welcome him. A cordial reception for President Sukarno, vigorous leader of an Asian democracy of 80 million people. So we do have a man of political and uh, temporal power. I want to introduce to you His Honor, the Mayor Polson. <laughs> Mr. President, this room uh, has a cross-section of all of Hollywood. There are presidents of companies, producers, directors, writers, newspaper people, actors, and even lawyers in the audience. <laughs> All the way from Jakarta to Bandung to Palapo. They revere here him in the same way that I am sure they did George Washington when our young country was being formed, whether it was in New York, Philadelphia, or Williamsburg. It is just 11 years ago that the Indonesians declared their independence from the Dutch. Just a relatively short time. And in this modern day when time and distance mean practically nothing, I'm wondering if we couldn't turn our calendars back to our own situation on May the 29th, 1787. 11 years after we declared our independence from Great Britain. And you will find perhaps that we can then better understand the situation in Indonesia and the rapidity with which they are attempting to solve their particular problems. In May 1787, we had just begun to put the finishing touches on the first federal constitution in the history of the world. The President of Indonesia, His Excellency, Mr. Sakarno. I thank you for your kind words. It is a great pleasure for me to be amongst you this evening. Hollywood is surely one of the great areas of the world, one of the best known and one of the most influential. Here in this golden state there has been established an industry of enormous power and one whose products are known the world over and have an effect the world over. Here you produce canned ambassadors which carry American ideas, American thoughts, American habits into almost every country of the world. You are powerful people, and I ask you to be responsible people who understand the great machine you control and respect its strength. 
you see one of the weapons of colonialism is illiteracy and the deliberate attempt to keep a nation isolated from the world. Hollywood has done great work in overcoming this isolation. The motion picture industry has provided a window on the world and the colonized nations have looked through that window and have seen the things of which they have been deprived. It is perhaps not generally realized that the refrigerator can be a revolutionary symbol to a people which has no refrigerators. A motor car owned by a worker in one country can be a symbol of revolt to a people deprived of even the necessities of life. The motion picture industry has shown the deprived, the underprivileged nations something of what is possible to a free people and has thus stimulated the demand for equality of opportunity in the world. Perhaps that window on the world has been fitted with distorting glass. But it is still a window and has let in light to dark places. Furthermore, amongst the people largely illiterate, motion pictures can be a substitute for reading. We, who were fortunate enough to have acquired the art of reading, Thank you. 